Hi, kitty cats. Okay, another reading. Uh, this time, we're going to read about another woman um, called Elizabeth Blackwell. Uh, she was a doctor, and she worked with poor to fight social injustice with medicine. She was the first woman in America to receive a medical degree founded the New York Infirmary for Women and Children and the London School of Medicine for Women. Her quote is, if the present arrangements of society will not admit of women's free development, then society must be remodeled. That's her. And so this is what she looks like. Look at her. Yeah. Okay. Elizabeth Blackwell. Elizabeth Blackwell had no interest in medicine until a friend of hers died from what was most likely uterine cancer. Her friend said she might have experienced less pain and suffering if only she had had a female doctor. This put Elizabeth on the path to becoming the first woman medical doctor in the United States. Elizabeth was born into a family of abolitionists in 1821. Abolitionists were those who are trying to free the slaves. With an upbringing that valued justice and equality. While working as a school teacher, she was mentored by male doctor friends and read books from their medical libraries. Although many didn't believe it was possible, she was accepted into Geneva, Geneva Medical College. Medical school is hard for any student, but Elizabeth faced additional challenges. Often met with hostility, she had to sit separately from the male students and her teachers were embarrassed by her presence during anatomy lessons. When asked to leave, leave a lecture about reproduction to protect her delicate sensibilities, she argued her way into staying. During the summer, she worked in a hospital in Philadelphia and saw how the hospital conditions contributed to the spread of infectious disease. The experience inspired her thesis on how good hygiene could prevent the spread of typhus, 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 typhus. In 1849, she graduated from Geneva Medical College first in her class. Elizabeth's sister, Emily, also became a doctor. Together with Dr. Marie Zekerzuska, they opened the New York Infirmary for Indigent, Indigent Women and Children in 1857. It was a place for the poor to get treatment and her female medical students and nurses to learn. In the 1800s, there was little known about communicable diseases and hand washing was not mandatory for doctors like it is today. It was very common for doctors to go straight from treating someone with the flu to delivering a baby without even washing up. Ooh. This caused the spread of diseases like typhus. Elizabeth realized that prevention is better than cure. And in her lectures, she advocated for better hygiene standards in hospitals and homes. Elizabeth went on to found the Women's Medical College of the New York Infirmary in 1868 and the London School of Medicine for Women around 1874. An inspiration to many women, she also made it possible for many of them to become doctors. So, she was accepted into medical school when the student body voted yes as a practical joke. She showed up anyways. Wow. Was 
a professor of gynecology at the London School of Medicine for Women. And she advocated for women's right, especially equal opportunity for female doctors. She wrote many books and papers on puberty, parenting, and family planning. She, she was trained in Paris and London Maternity Ward after medical school. In 1849, while caring for a baby's gonorrhea, infected eye, Elizabeth became infected herself and lost sight in one eye. Wow. Helped train union nurses with her sister during the Civil War. And she started the National Health Society in London. So this is Elizabeth Blackwell, the first female doctor in the United States. And because of her, I'm sure she saved many lives. So um, here's another woman in history contributing to the betterment of society. I hope you like it. Until next time, good night, sleep tight, don't let the bed bugs bite, okay? Bye. Mwah.